Hola, bon dia. Carl Munson here with the Good Morning Portugal update on the COVID-19 coronavirus situation here in Portugal, looking at the global and national numbers as usual. And then we'll take a look at the, uh, well, unpacking and uh, getting into the nitty gritty of the state em- state of emergency uh, on day two of the state of emergency and seeing uh, what's in the detail of uh, the proposals from the Portuguese government after the state of emergency was declared at midnight uh, two days ago uh, or, or yesterday at uh, midnight. So um, let's uh, first of all look at the numbers in uh, the global numbers and uh, I use uh, the world ometer for that and the links to all well most of what I share can be found on the goodmorningportugal.com page And as you can see there, the global numbers have surpassed a quarter of a million now, 246,657 coronavirus cases globally with over 10,000 deaths now. But the uh, number always just gives me a little bit of relief and comfort is the uh, 88,488 recoveries. Let's have a look at the recovery status in Portugal as well. And uh, if you're an, an expat, immigrant, explorer, guest or whatever in Portugal, you can see your country of origin as well here in in among this uh, uh, worldometers.info slash coronavirus uh, data here. So Portugal, now 786 um, cases uh, with four deaths here in, in Portugal and four recoveries as well. So 778 active cases, 20 people in a serious or critical condition and our figure uh, that's uh, very slowly rising. Uh, let's, uh, let's say fingers crossed that the measures that are being taken are helping with containment and that's that's where we're at you know all the numbers that seem to be rising or are rising and containment and distancing and isolation is in place to uh, attenuate and uh, manage the the um the speed of the of that rise in numbers and uh, h- here i am uh, reporting from Portugal, where uh, I think uh, a pretty good job is being done of, of people staying at home. It really does feel like it's gone much quieter. I'm, I know that's very anecdotal, but I can only speak of where I am. And, uh, I, you know, the atmosphere has definitely changed. If you're listening from another country in the world and you want a, a glimpse of what's going on in Portugal, the atmosphere has changed here. Uh, the people, I think, generally speaking, are responding really well. Um, but yeah, things are, things are different. I think life has changed. Uh, and uh, Luis and Mrs. Munson and I, we record uh, an audio diary as well as part of the Good Morning Portugal podcast where we go into our own personal, uh, yeah, the COVID-19 diary effectively, if you want to uh, listen to that. And that's, you know, that's our effort to um, manage life here. You know, we came to Portugal on a, on a dream of, um, you know, as, uh, as explorers into Portugal and we would never have imagined this. Uh, but there you go. This, you know, this is, this is what's happening now. And uh, we, we need to work together, stick together. And uh, I'm here to, to uh, work with you as well. However, that whatever shape that takes, we have the Stay Positive Portugal Facebook group, if that's a useful place to uh, socialize uh, distantly, as it were. Um, please use that. And uh, this is focal point in the morning is intended to be a, a, the delivery of the status, really, of what's going on in terms of the data and some of the more factual reporting of what's going on. And um, I say that with some hesitancy. I'm going to go now to um, the Portugal resident, Algov resident coverage, uh, which I, I found really helpful. Uh, obviously, you know, the, the newspaper coverage is is a uh, it can be a little bit on the subjective side. It's not as uh, obviously not as uh, uh, stark as the numbers I just shared with you. So you, we go into some sort of interpretation here, and, and we, we kind of have to really um, because we're translating for one thing. Or Natasha Don is, and, and and thank you to Natasha for her excellent coverage of what's going on. Um, and this is the Portugal resident, which is also I think connected with the Algarve resident newspaper. So those two reporting sources. Uh, are connected and Natasha Don's been doing a great job her article here state of emergency government starts explaining what it all means this is a, a piece from yesterday the 19th of March so let's go through this together and um, in, in, in my attempt to just to keep you as up to date and uh, on top of things as possible uh, wherever you are with 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 Portugal in mind and with this uh, English speaking service so 
As the government draws up lists of establishments that must close and businesses that need to stay open, various messages are coming out in the nation's press. First and foremost is the fact, of course, people are allowed out of their homes. They have every right to walk their dogs, buy food, go to the pharmacy and or the bank. <laughs> I think the bank. Wow. Um, so there you go. The, that's, that is a big question for people. You know, are we curfew? Do you have to stay at home? So there you go. The, the consensus appears to be that, yeah, you go out, walk your dogs, buy food, go to the pharmacy, of course, if you need to, and go about your most important business. Um, and I think the guidance there is to not do that in groups of more than five people. Some people are, even are allowed to still go to work, even though, or, or although remote working from home is essentially the rule now. And I think we're getting used to that. Uh, other than these few reasons, people are expected to stay home. So that is the expectation, says the Expresso newspaper. When you leave your homes this morning, it will be another strange day, but you won't see yet the effects of last night's declaration of a state of emergency. Portugal entered this most grave situation at midnight on March the 18th. Further restrictive measures will only be approved today. And I, I hope in the other article I'm going to go through, that will give you a bit more detail. And we'll continue to do that here anyway on the Facebook page and in these morning live streams. On the table of the Council of Ministers meeting as we write, this was as of yesterday, are recommendations from the health authorities that will accentuate restrictions on the functioning of commercial activities, but these won't involve obligatory testing, quarantine or the closure of businesses, said the paper. So at that stage, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, there, there, there is no talk of obligatory testing, quarantine or the closure of businesses. The government will be taking decisions on the basis of what has happened in other countries, particularly Spain and Italy, where the death and infection tolls are the worst in Europe and on the recommendations of the direct, General Directorate of Health, the DGS, consulted by the Prime Minister last night. Uh, the measures emerging will be subject to change and re-evaluation at any moment. Remember, of course, that it's a 15-day cycle on the state of emergency, which is reviewable, uh, warns Expresso. Itemising the first in a list that is likely to get longer. So number one, all businesses requiring the physical presence of customers, clients are to close with the exception of supermarkets, fuel, petrol stations, pharmacies and banks. A positive list is being drawn up of establishments that must stay open, uh, says Expresso, explaining that beyond establishments recommended by the DGS, there could be others like those that sell animal feed. And because this is um, you know, an unusual, extraordinary situation, of course, the exceptions will, will come to light. Uh, uh, it, would, it would appear uh, things that we haven't thought of you know we didn't know what we didn't know sort of stuff a negative list is being drawn up of businesses that must close one of the overriding concerns is that lines of distribution must be maintained and for this to be possible production also has to be allowed to go ahead indeed and uh, that will come to light of what's required in the effort uh, restaurants and bars can all remain open but will only be allowed to sell takeaways or affect home deliveries and I've even seen um, uh, Uber Eats driver in my neighbourhood, which is quite, quite an unusual thing. It's from quite far away from a big city. Uh, teleworking, working from home on computers, devices is now obligatory for all functions that could be performed this way. Public services are to be reduced to the essential. All leisure slash cultural services and institutions must remain closed. This covers libraries, cinemas, theme parks, gyms, clubs, etc. Media organisations must continue working as long as social distancing measures are ensured. Public transport stay in operation, albeit in a reduced capacity. When it comes to the most vulnerable, the DGS is in collaboration with councils and social services to ensure these these receive home deliveries of essential goods that would be food and medication the message to everyone else is look out for your elderly neighbors i think that message is loud and clear and i think that's happening now as the days progress it's very likely there'll be times published in which the elderly are given preference for shopping good idea stresses expresso the intention of antonio costa the prime minister here is not to close the country down even though he has constitutional support with this state of emergency to do so. The measures introduced so far are simply what the authorities deem necessary, adequate and proportionate. Both Mr Costa and President Marcelo have praised the attitude of the Portuguese population this far. Communities have knuckled down from the outset, with many taking the state of alert on face value and voluntarily isolating since last week. As new measures are announced, the resident will be reporting on them. That's the Portugal and Algarve resident uh, sources there. Um, said President Marcelo, this is a war that requires resistance, solidarity and courage yes we're going to need those aren't we resistance solidarity and courage and i personally comments and me here doing the live stream very heartened by the response and leadership of uh, president marcelo 
uh, and its Prime Minister, Antonio Costa. The road ahead of us will be long, difficult and very unpleasant, he added, but I have no doubt that we will win. Yes. So thank you, uh, Natasha Don. Let's go to more of your coverage, Natasha, uh, in another of your articles, which is uh, Prime Minister outlines nitty gritty of Portugal state of emergency. Let's see if there's any additional stuff here uh, to share with you. Following a marathon council of ministers yesterday, lasting well over six hours, Prime Minister Antonio Costa held a press conference this evening to give more details on Portugal, Portugal state of emergency giving very little new information from what has already been reported. And that's what I've just gone through with you. He stressed the objective was to allow the maximum by way of efforts to contain the virus with the minimum of upset to, day, to people's daily lives. So that's the key here, isn't it? It's the maximum effort to, to contain and limit the contagion and spread of the virus with, with the minimum of upset to people's daily lives. Uh, and that said, you know, I think we should anticipate quite a lot of upset to our daily lives. That's already happening as well, isn't it? Um, but how we manage that, I guess, is key. A vast selection of businesses will remain open. A, a vast selection of businesses, in, in inverted commas, there's a quote, as long as all the measures for social distancing and hygiene are respected. In other words, kiosks, bakeries, supermarkets, banks, petrol stations, fuel stations, pharmacies, health shops, every kind of operation that supplies services deemed essential to ensure the smooth running of daily life will be allowed to stay open, albeit conditioned to ensure the safety of staff and customers. Tomorrow, the council will have a further meeting, this time to decide social measures, particularly supporting families and small businesses. It's been clear from the outset that the state of emergency would be revealed bit by bit, changing possibly as circumstances develop, as you might imagine and expect here in this situation, in this extraordinary situation. The, the, with regards to flights, Mr. Kosh just said, this has pretty much been sorted earlier in the week in collaboration with the EU. And you can link from Portugal resident to the, a piece about the uh, collaboration with the EU about flights. But from Portugal's point of view, the government has insisted that TAP, TAP, our domestic airline here, maintain certain routes like those to the archipelagos, the uh, autonomous districts, Madeira and the Azores. Uh, a number of Portuguese still stranded in various far-flung corners of the rapidly closing world, however. Uh, that, that's what's happening. A number of Portuguese are still stranded. Uh, and Mr. Costa said the government is working on these situations case by case, and some of the cases are indeed complicated. Well, at the start of the address, the PM stressed the role of security forces, which now have the repressive function to close businesses that cannot be in operation proceeding with the crime of disobedience, <clears throat> which sounds very stern, doesn't it? But I guess I need to be expected in these circumstances. The message in line with all messages for the last two weeks is for citizens, particularly the over 70s and those with chronic illnesses, to stay home as much as possible and help the national effort to flatten the curve, re referring to the sharp rise so far every day in new cases. We're getting that message, aren't we, folks? Stay at home and help the people who are having to stay at home, right? We're shopping and stuff like that and go through all the necessary um, decontamination, disinfection and so on with stuff going in and out of people's houses. But, yeah, we've got to stay home, particularly the vulnerable and those of us who are st still able to move about and can do that, look after those people. Uh, people with young children and pets are at liberty to take them out for short periods of recreation, only one adult at a time, interesting. It's clear from all the measures that the emphasis is on social distancing and staying as much as possible within the home. Now, I want to come back to that when the this more sort of uh, factually stuff is, um, uh, uh, is concluded as the first part of the show, and we talk about social distancing, uh, which I believe is a bit of a misnomer, uh, personally but anyway we'll talk about that in a while and do join me if you if you wish to as well i'm doing my best to deliver the information as quickly as possible in the morning so you know if it's your only one it's a useful source of information it's all about balance at the moment uh, perhaps i'll leave that as a parting shot i wish you well um take care bye for now to logo stay safe as i say there stay safe stay positive stay healthy stay close to the ground here in portugal uh, lots of love to you take care bye for now